Okay, this is cycle two, week 14, fine arts, and our um, artist for this week is Thomas Gainsborough. Um, there are a ton of his portraits and paintings throughout the book here. This is back to the Ridgelight Ranch um, fine arts that we're going to do. Um, there, besides the one sentence summary that she puts in here, which is really good every week, um, you might want to go back and bring the timeline um, that you guys have from last week that shows where each one of the artists and composers kind of fits in with our timeline. That'll give you kind of a good starting point for discussing where this artist came in history. Um, but just a little bit about Gainsborough. Really, um, he was a classic artist. He loved art. He loved music. His favorite thing to do was um, landscapes. But he found out pretty early that um, painting portraits was a lot more profitable. So he got a little bit more money doing that. So he actually kind of combined the two. And he created art where he was able to put a portrait in with the landscape in the background. Um, so that's kind of what he is most known for. So what we're going to focus on is landscape and we're going to focus on um, bringing back in a little bit of that perspective that we brought in from our drawing um, in the first six weeks. And what I really love about what she's kind of put together here is she has um, on page two of this second week, um, she has a list of questions that you can ask when you are getting ready to draw something that has a perspective to it, some more depth to it. Questions like, what would I be seeing, smelling, hearing if I were in the place that I wanna, that I wanna create? What would I physically be feeling? What would the sky look like? Would, would the weather be cloudy, windy, um, cold? What do I want the viewer to feel when they look at my, when they look at my picture? Fear, um, excitement, being peaceful, those kinds of things. So when you're thinking about that, then you can also then start to think what's gonna be the front thing that I see, what's gonna be in the middle of my portrait, and what's gonna be at the back or my landscape. And then what methods of perspective are gonna help me with that? So I brought this back, I, got, I gave you guys each another copy. This is actually from, um, it's in this book too, but it was also in our drawing book when we talked about perspective. So this kind of gives them a refresher on where um, you wanna place things, how big, um, relatively how big, how intense the color is based on whether it's in the foreground or the background. Those kinds of things are gonna help them um, draw a landscape with perspective. And then she gives you a whole bunch of vocabulary words that you can choose from to introduce. You might want to introduce more of them if you have older kids, fewer, fewer of them if you have younger kids. The um, materials and things that I'm going to provide for this um, provide for painting. However, if you just really feel like your kids can't handle paint or you show up on week 14 and you're like, I can't handle paint, <laughs> Feel free to use crayons, markers, colored pencils. Um, you guys have those things, but I'll also bring some extra crayons and some extra markers in case, um, in case you want to use those instead of paint. Um, but what you guys are going to have, the, the project that she's given us is to create a landscape. So there's a couple of different options that we have here. For the younger kids, um, she says to give... Each student, so the paper that I'm giving you in, in this, for this week is what's called mixed media paper, and it's thicker. It's not quite finished like cardstock, but it's a heavier weight like cardstock so that when you paint on it, it absorbs the paint, it dries more quickly. So hopefully that will be a little bit easier as we are painting. Um, so for the youngest kids, what you have an option of is giving them this picture, and I don't really know if you can even see it really well, um, but there is a sketch of a boy, and then there is a lake, and then there are some trees. So this is just a loose sketch for them to kind of start with. What do I want my landscape to be? Do I want it to be a forest? Do I want it to be, um, you know, just a open lake scene with a couple of trees, but they can sketch in a few more details and then they can paint, they can paint it. Um, level two, 
you could still use this or you could use just the boy. So each one of you in your packet for this week is going to have one each of these for each one of your students. So the boy with the lake and then just the regular paper with just the boy. So you can have them sketch in a few more details that they'd like of their boy and then begin to sketch in details of their landscape and then paint it. Um, you can show them obviously the sketch of the um, trees with the lake. You can also show them this one which is page nine in this week, which this is kind of what this is patterned after. Here's a boy and his sister, I believe, and they are sitting there's a lake behind them and some trees, and you can see the perspective that's in this. You can see how farther away some of the trees look than others and how the lake is definitely in the background. So this would be a good option to show during class for them to kind of see what the goal is of this particular project. Level three, you could have them start with just the boy and create their own landscape. Um, on the moon, um, at sea, at a baseball game, um, in a computer game, I mean, anywhere, the possibilities they could, you know, be super, super creative and get them to ask those same questions. What do I want my viewer to feel? What, what kinds of light, what kinds of atmosphere, what kinds of um, scenery am I going to have that portrays these things and what's going to be in the front focus, what's going to be in the middle, and then what's going to be at the back. Um, and then... Fourth, for the level four, the oldest kids, they don't even need to start with a sketch if they don't want. They can use the back of their mixed media paper and they would each have two sheets to kind of work with, but draw a loose sketch in pencil and then a loose sketch of the landscape and then fill it in with paint or markers or crayon. Again, this is another one that's really easily produced or practiced further at home. Um, they can take what they have started and expound on it. Um, or they can um, create something very similar but in a totally different environment. So if they did a forest during community day, maybe they could do um, in a desert or at, a, you know, at the ocean or on the beach. Um, all those different ideas for them to keep recreating different landscapes and practicing with paint and then also practicing with um, perspective. So that is Cycle 2, Week 14, Fine Art.